this is Cathy Vogan reporting from the counting room in Rochdale in, for the by-election and I am with James. James, who are you? My name is Councillor James Giles. I'm an independent councillor in South London. But for the last month, I've been the campaign manager here on the Galloway campaign in Rochdale. And how is it going? How is it going uh, for George? Well, look, it's going better than our wildest hopes. Uh, George will win here comfortably tonight and by a good margin is my prediction. But what we're seeing is a complete abject rejection of party politics here. It's my view, it has been for weeks, that a certain David Tully, the independent, uh, will come second here. Conservatives and Labour, George will tell you often, are two cheeks of the same backside, and the voters of Rochdale, I think, will be sending that message loud and clear when we get the declaration here in probably 90 minutes to two hours, give or take. How do you think the former uh, Labour candidate will do? Did, were people uh, confused? Did they think that they would be voting for Labour in this well, election? Well, Mr Ali's family were here, yeah. as all the candidates sent people to scrutinise the votes. They left the building within an hour. I think that tells you what you need to know about Labour's lacklustre campaign. And how did Reform do, do you think? Uh, I think Reform will lose their deposit, personally, but let's wait and see. So, uh, this is Joe Laurie, the editor of Consorting News. Hi. Good to meet with you. What, uh, what do you think were the main issues here now? Much has been made about Gaza, but there's only 20 to 30 percent Muslim here. Is that what you think is wanted for George tonight? Well, look, Gaza's an issue that transcends race. It transcends religion. There are several white people I've spoken to on the doors that mention Gaza as a primary issue. But our slogan throughout has been for Rochdale, for Gaza, in that order. Uh, and so we've been talking about the fact you can't be born here anymore because they shut down the maternity or unit. Or die. They all die here, yeah. They shut down the a and &E. Uh, we've spoken about the grooming gangs here, which Labour covered up for years. Labour controlled the police here, Labour controlled the council here. We've spoken about wasteful local authority spending here at the hands of Labour. And that's a message that resonates with everybody, old or young, black or white, Muslim, Christian, no religion, other. Uh, and that's why we're on course for a big victory here. Now, George is not from this community, was not seen as an outsider coming in? Uh, well, look. The Labour candidate, or the ex-Labour candidate, disgraced Labour candidate, I don't really know what I should call him at this point, the non-entity, um, he had never set foot in Rochdale before he had been selected as their candidate. He's a, a councillor somewhere up in uh, Lancashire. So, you know, George isn't the foreigner here. He's been coming to Rochdale for 25 years. Uh, his two children live near here, in Greater Manchester. His daughter was born here in Greater Manchester. When you could still be born here. When you could still be born here. Uh, he's been coming to Rochdale for a long time and seemingly will be coming here for a long time will to come. Will he be living here in, in Absolutely, London? Absolutely, yes. Have a place to live That's here right. and back in London. Correct. So um, he's going to have to give up his uh, day job, then. Huh? Oh, he has, but he'll still be doing moats. He still? He still will be doing moats. Uh, on a Wednesday and a Sunday, although no we'll see about the Wednesday, but that's up to him. I don't know anything about that, but he'll still be doing moats. Well, that's a quite um, unique situation, an MP with a platform like that. Absolutely. A couple of million a week. It. Yeah, uh, moats will be continuing, and I'm what sure pounds? its audience will no, grow from over a million per show to over two million per show, Yeah, uh, is my view on it. Uh, and who knows, maybe he'll even be broadcasting direct from the Houses of well, Parliament. You've been, around, you've, been around, <laughs> you've been around George this whole uh, period and, and today. The juices are flowing and now he's gonna, getting geared up again and get back into the... Absolutely. Into the he's comments. coming home. He is known as one of the best orators uh, oh, in, the, in the country. Undoubtedly, one of the best orators in the world, uh, if you ask me. Uh, Parliament is sorely lacking that voice. And uh, although there's only 200 days left of this parliament, I think things just got interesting. Well, let's talk about that for a moment. I mean, sure. he's going to have to run again. In two, he has 200 days to show the people here that he should be sent back again, yeah. right? Consider this a probation period. I don't know if you have that in the States, but yes. we do here. You get a job, you've got so many months to prove you're up right. to it. Right. We're going to start the job, and it'll be up to the voters in 200 days to decide if they want us to finish the job. And I'm quite sure that by the time that 200 days is up, they'll want us to finish well, the job. what can he accomplish in 200 days? Well, there's plenty he can accomplish. Uh, for many, he can be that sorely lacking voice on Gaza. Locally, he's not even the MP yet. He's already secured the reopening of the open-air market here in Rochdale. Uh, on the verge of securing Primark here. 
In 200 days, I think he can save the football club, which is on the brink of liquidation at the moment. Uh, there's so much that can be done. Uh, there's so much to do. So we'll hit the ground and running. Of course, he can be the voice of forgiveness. Of course, he could be the voice, not only the people of Rochester, but throughout the UK, who want to see an end to this massacre in Gaza. And he can go into this national parliament to be that voice. Is that right? That will be important to the people yeah, here. Right. Ab absolutely. Will he take on Ke Keir Starmer? Turn out. Will he take on Ke Keir Starmer? Uh, undoubtedly. Look, his, his first Prime Minister's question, I think we'll start with, as I was saying, Mr. Speaker. Oh, that's nice. Uh, How many but, years ago? <laughs> yeah, indeed. But, um, yeah, he'll use his platform wisely. He was wisely. Really interrupted for several he years. He was, yeah. But uh, he'll use his platform wisely. He'll use it well. And, uh, God willing, that's why he'll be re-elected come the general. Right. And when Did we you know the date of that already? We no. don't, I'm afraid. So you're guessing it's 200 days. Right? It's up to it. can't be longer than. Yeah. Well, that's five years is over. Yeah. yeah. Is that right? So Truss and Sunak together. And Johnson. And Johnson. Oh, and Johnson. Oh, of yeah. course. <laughs> Three to fill what, five years. OK. Tell me about I'm it. Yes. about Johnson yeah. already. I know. <laughs> and do you know anything about Andrew Feinstein? Is he going to be challenging... Um, is he going to be challenging Keir Starmer? Yeah, I've been in touch with Andrew. Andrew will be challenging Keir Starmer as an independent. <laughs> and I think George's win here tonight will spark a flame of independence across the country. I think there'll be hundreds standing uh, in various seats that really could end up holding the balance of power. Oh yeah, tell us more about the Workers' Party. Uh, you're running in 55 constituencies now, but... Uh, and counting. And counting, yes. Uh, well look, I'm an independent councillor in South West London ordinarily <laughs> myself, so uh, I'm not best placed to Adam Great on the Workers' Party. Uh, but the party will explode in a good way, unlike Labour's campaign that imploded. We will explode onto the British political scene. Uh, and I think that's something that the people of Rochdale should be proud of uh, facilitating. Oh, this is where George got Adam Break from. That's right. When he interviewed me last week about Assange, he, uh, he is that we're remarking about well, I think that James got it from him, actually. No, no. <laughs> there was a tradition in the Labour Party, yeah. when it was a Labour Party, of Tony Benn, Eric Heffer, right. great orators. Of course. People who are inspiring to work with yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Is there anybody else besides George now that you could think of? Well, perhaps I'll Andrew. Be, I'd be, I'd be hard-pressed. I'd be hard-pressed. He's going to bring that tradition back. He House certainly will, undoubtedly. But don't you think Andrew will bring it back as well? He's uh, quite a good orator. Yeah, well. if, he, if he gets yes. in, he's got a terrific CV against Starmer. Yes. Um, it'll be a challenge. This was a challenge. So, uh, you know, let's prove George's worth and maybe others will follow. How has the mainstream media treated George and reported on him in this case? Well, it's remarkable how different they treat you once they think you're going to win. Uh -huh. um, so, uh -huh. let's see. Uh, George doesn't often get a fair crack of the whip, uh, but he's starting to. Um, so I think we're in for a good night. Um, I thank you both. I'm happy to speak to you again. If yes. you'll forgive me, no, I'm being beckoned by colleagues, but I'm so really grateful. Finally, finally, you think there's there's hope for the workers of Britain now? Absolutely, undoubtedly. Yeah. And it started here in Rochdale tonight. Thank you so much. It started before historically as well, didn't it? Well, the cooperative movement was born here. Isn't it a wonderful synergy? Two hundred revival. Years on. Rochdale revival. Yes. Thank, thank you very you much, both. James. Pleasure. All Bye. the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.